What is up, plastic friends? As the year draws to a close, I like to look back at my toy collecting year of shows I went to, uh, deals I've made, and of course, favorite pieces of plastic I've collected this year. This is my personal uh, top 10, uh, not tied to being released this year or anything. It's vintage and, and modern, all mixed up. If I missed any of your personal favorites, let me know in the comments below, uh, but these, these are mine. My name is Vince, like, share and subscribe, and let's dig into the Mint in Mind Top Toys of 2023. But let's look at some honorable mentions first. I got a real cause statue for my 40th birthday, um, which was amazing, which was a big surprise. Um, it's not a toy, of course, but it's very much part of that vinyl toy, designer toy realm, if you will. This was also the year of really good mainline modern transformers, like the excellent Legacy Beachcomber or uh, Studio Series 86 Ironhide. All really fun bots with a really good price to fun ratio. And let's not forget about the 200 mint in mind breath mints that Marcus and Linda and Jaco made for me for my birthday. Um, thoughtful encouragement of my YouTube brand or warning signal about my personal hygiene, who knows. And this was also the year that I first dipped my toe into the world of vintage KOs with this Super Sentai Life Man KO that I got that uh, means nothing to no one but me due to some unresolved childhood trauma. This is a really weird hobby sometimes. Okay, so enough with the honorable mentions, let's get into the actual top 10. At number 10, it's 1990 Bandai Winspector Walter Tector. So this green and silver Sentai, it's looking like a, uh, like a Christmas ornament, um, is one I was after for quite a while. And I got it in January because I did a Vincent, as Tremendous Toy Things Linda likes to call it. Yeah, that's when I see something at a toy show that I leave behind and then I regret it and then I have to hunt down the seller afterwards and then I still get it just with added shipping costs. I saw this one at Vintage Toys of the Universe in Belgium in late 2022. It was on my list, it was sealed, the price was cool and somehow I still left without it. I'm an exhausting person to be. In a way, this is one of those purchases where the seed was planted 33 years ago and I finally got to close the loop because I spotted these things in the 90s in a department store in, in Germany while on vacation and they blew me away. Um, but I'm kind of glad that I didn't get them as a kid because these things are so fragile, there's no way they would have survived my childhood playtime. It's Team and T Slam Dunking Donatello. So this is my favorite pickup from Toy Zone Amsterdam, the Spring Edition, and this is a uh, Team and T homage to Michael Jordan. He's from that phase where nothing was cooler than basketball. Uh, Looney Tunes were getting into it. Uh, Michael Jackson was getting into it, and, and of course Team and T. Amazing sculpting, not just on the turret itself, but also on his basketball and his. Um, trash can hoop thingy he just oozes that late 80s early 90s toy goodness i measure these top 10 contestants on a couple of factors but the most important one must be is it fun is it a fun toy does it make me smile do i pick it up off the shelf all the time to shoot more pictures and slam dunking donny hits all those points nothing but net At number eight, get to the chopper. An action master in your annual top 10? Hear me out. This is 1991 European exclusive Action Master Elites windmill. And the Action Master Elites were kind of Hasbro's way of going back on their decision to make non-transforming transformers. It's not even a really good transformation either. It's more of like a, a bird dog yoga pose here. And there it is, that, that's the transformation. Totally a helicopter. But that's what makes this guy so fascinating to me. 
Um, if you were a Transformers fan in the 90s, you were reluctantly playing with your Action Masters and you were trying to force some kind of transformation out of their nine points of articulation, like, like this. Kind of works. Totally boombox mode. And it's like Hasbro went like, what if they did transform? What if we take these lies and make them true somehow? And, and that's the Action Master elites. And that's why I find windmills so irresistible because coolness, like comedy, is not a straight line. It's, it's a circle. And, and sometimes something is so bad that it comes all the way back around up again. Now, being European exclusive means that they've gotten crazy expensive lately because the Americans are after them. I definitely missed my window to get it for a somewhat sane price. Luckily, the make me an offer button on eBay sometimes actually works. I made a seller a, uh, a low offer. He instantly agreed. So there you have it. Be bold next year, 2024. Just shoot your shot, put in a low offer and, and see what happens. At number seven, it's this chunk of plastic. It's the 2023 Studio Series 86 Ultra Magnus. Um, I needed some, some self-care in October and I, I treated myself to the plastic equivalent of a giant stack of cheesecake. Because this guy is, he's gorgeous. And what really sold me on him was the um, spring-loaded Matrix Chamber gimmick. Because this is what the Studio Series 86 does best. It takes characters that had like a bad time with their first toy the first time around, like Rekgar or Scourge, and then gives them a great makeover. And sure, we've had Ultra Magnuses in the past. Magnusy? Magnusi? <laughs> For me personally, this is legitimately the single best version they've done so far. And when you can take a boring character as Ultra Magnus with his inferiority complex and make him as badass as this, then you have clearly won. His transformation is complex, but still fun. The way his truck cab just sort of turns inside out to form his chest and the way everything just snaps into place. He ranks this high because in the end, the most important thing is, is it fun to handle? Does it bring me joy? that's more important than rarity or complexity or any of that stuff. And sometimes you just need a big, dumb chunk of plastic in your life to make you feel a little bit better. <gasps> not Transformers, not Turtles. No, it's Computer Warriors slash Computer Force by Mattel from 1989. Bonus points if you already knew about this toy line before watching this video. You're looking at Null in his soccer trophy or football trophy uh, radar tank thingy. Computer warriors are these tiny little figures in these uh, vehicles that would transform into one-to-one -one scale everyday household items. So kind of like Mosque but less exciting. I was after this one for a while because I had like a a shard of a memory of the original commercial stuck in my head, like, like a memory of a past life experience. A soccer trophy changes into an evil techno tank, forcing the computer warriors down. Hiding in a Pepsi can, the computer warriors fight back and deliver a direct hit. But the viruses keep coming. Like a splinter in the brain, I have to take it out. That's kind of my thing. That's kind of why I do this hobby. So this one and the Pepsi can one are the ones that stood out to me, but because it's not the main line that I collect, I wouldn't allow myself to hunt for it too hard or, or pay too much money for it. Luckily, last October, I spotted one at a convention for the right price at the right time. And I'm very glad I picked it up because it's a very simple toy, but it just makes me very happy. At number five, it's this thing, non-transforming, barely posable. It's Super 7 Transformers the Movie Unicron from their reaction figures line. Now, let me explain to you the significance of this toy. When the Transformers 1986 movie came out, there was a change in how Hasbro designed Transformer toys. Before the movie, 
Hasbro used Japanese designs from Diaclon and Mikuruman, and those were translated to comic books, and those comic book designs were translated to animation models by Sunbow, I think. So until the movie in season 3 came out, it was toys first. But Hasbro kind of ran out of Japanese toys to import, and for the 1986 movie, they needed a whole bunch of new characters, so those were designed animation first from scratch. This led to some very wild designs like Scourge and the Sweeps and, and the Quintessons and Junkions and of course Unicron, the Orson Welles voiced planet-eating Satan of the Transformers universe. Now Unicron never got a toy in the 80s. Hasbro did release of course their uh, 2021 HasLab Unicron which is huge and expensive but they never did a Unicron toy in the 80s. But there was a Unicron prototype, uh, which kind of looked like a, a basketball with arms and legs. They were trying their best at the time, okay? And these days, that prototype is at a museum somewhere. And that's what Super 7 based their toy design on. Not some slick animation accurate Unicron with his spiky wings, not some big expensive showpiece that takes an hour to transform, just this plastic totem of a piece of Transformers history. And that's more than enough reason to have Super 7 Unicron on the Mint in Mind top 10 list. Choo choo mother <laughs> Pulling in at number four, it's Masterpiece Trainbot Shooky. Um, I was after Shuki for a while, so I was overjoyed when I got it as a Sinterklaas gift. Thank you, Sinterklaas. I thought it was likely that I would end up owning a Shuki one day, so at a convention last year, I already picked up his Generation 1 counterpart to make comparison pictures in the future. Because look at this cute, stumpy little dude, and now look at his glorious masterpiece makeover. Maybe it's because Shuki never got a modern version that I'm so impressed with this one. No, I'm not counting that Japanese Astro Train repaint or the, uh, the Creon minifig. There is no generation Shuki or legacy evolution Shuki. It's just the OG guy and then this. And that kind of brings me back to the start of the Masterpiece line back in the early 2000s when you were still overwhelmed with the quality leap from Generation 1 to Masterpiece. Ashuki transforms into a Zero Series Shinkansen, uh, which is a high-speed train from Japan from 1964. And his transformation is quite ingenious and completely different from his Generation 1 toy. He goes from a very slender, long train into a very chunky robot. Now, Shuki does combine with five other train bots to form this sort of mega masterpiece combiner called Raiden. And, and it, it, that's just madness. Imagine the, the weight and the, the scale of that thing. And um, I'm, I'm not going to get the others. I am really not that interested in the other train bots. It's just this guy for me. So I'm, I'm breaking the play pattern, but you know, I'm, I'm chaotic like that. Now, is Shuki the best masterpiece ever made? Probably not. His transformation, although ingenious, is a little bit nerve-wracking as it relies on some very thin connections and very fragile bits. Uh, but hey, I love him. I love him from his pointy head crest down to his blocky stompers. At number three is a toy that came in in January of this year. It's Transformers Legacy Evolution Tarn. Um, I was looking forward to this guy from the moment he was revealed at PulseCon. You know, I mostly collect vintage, but there has been some undeniably good modern Transformers this year, so this one sort of symbolizes that. I never thought that Hasbro would do a Tarn. It's very rare that a character gets introduced to Transformers lore this late and that they stick. Um, Bulkhead, Lockdown, Windblade are all exceptions to that rule, but um, Tarn, out of all those new characters, is not the, the easiest to add to the toy line. Now, Tarn comes from the excellent More Than Meets the Eye comic books by IDW Comics, which were very dark comics. They dealt with some very complex themes like death and prisoners of war and, and classism. And in those comics, 
Tarn is sort of the ultra Decepticon. He's the head of the Decepticon Justice Division. They hunt down Decepticon deserters and then he whispers them to death. Tarn is kind of the head of the Decepticon Gestapo. And now he's a toy. You can tell that the guys at Hasbro really put some extra love into this figure because he's just gorgeous. There's no no unnecessary hollow bits. He's painted very well. The proportions are great. The alt mode is a bit meh, but that's accurate to the comics. I just couldn't stop taking pictures of this guy. What a time to be alive as a Transformers fan. There's a toy of Tarn. It exists and it doesn't suck. Now, if you've been following my Instagram account, then the number two doesn't come as a surprise. I've been documenting my journey to find this one for years. It's the French card Usagi Yojimbo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Tortue Ninja, if you will. Now, the reason that this French card is a holy grail to me is, is deeply personal. I spent my summers in France and somehow around summer vacation was always the time when the new toys would drop. And I very quickly decided that Usagi was my favorite simply based on the tiny little picture on the card back. But we could never find Usagi uh, in the Netherlands, but we did find it in France in a Tortue Ninja packaging. The French Bandai card, even as a kid, kind of puzzled me because I knew turtles were made by Playmates, not Bandai. And I remember asking my mom to translate the French bio on the back. It was really important for me to find a sealed one because I still had the card back of my childhood Usagi that sort of sent me down this rabbit hole. And I still have my original Usagi. I took really good care of it. It was my favorite. But I wanted a sealed one to have that ultimate nostalgic memory anchor of those summers spent in France. I also wanted more of a collecting challenge because a US card or a British uh, Hero Turtles card is actually quite easy to find, they're quite common. So I spent years and years and years trying to find the French card and I thought, c'est impossible, but one month after I had given up and bought a US card Usagi, suddenly I had a chance to buy the French one. This is just maximum nostalgia for me. I am instantly transported back to the back seat of a hot car with no AC, with my Walkman on. Magnifique. And now for number one. I often get asked, what happens after you acquire a Holy Grail? Do you feel empty inside? Do you consider stopping collecting? Or do you set new goals and new grails. So I saw this picture online and it triggered something in me. It, it, it unlocked all sorts of memories and, and, and all those memories came rushing back at once, kind of like, like, like brain freeze. Like... It was a picture of the transforming Cadillac from Heathcliff and the Cadillac Cats, the first cartoon I remember watching together with Inspector Gadget. I must have been two or three years old, but I remember that transforming car. This has to be my new holy grail because I need difficult grails. The Supreme Catatonic from Samurai Pizza Cats and the Inspector Gadget doll show that everything's findable as long as you trust in the triangle. I'm talking about the triangle of network budget patience. If you lack any of the three, then you need to rely a little bit more on the other two, but network budget patience will get you your grails eventually. But this thing is ultra rare, only released in France, I believe, and 
Like many of the Bandai Poppy things, it's beautifully engineered but also very fragile, which means it's very hard to find unbroken. I was ready to hunt for this thing for years, but it seems I need to set even harder grails because one month after discovering that it exists, I have it in hand. And I found it this quick through the help of a very dear friend, Captain Plant Toys on Instagram, who helped me track this down just for the sport of it. I am forever grateful, dude. Go follow Captain Planet Toys on Instagram. I mean, look at this beauty. It transforms from Riff Raff's Cadillac into his mobile home in a similarly brilliant way to Bandai Poppy's uh, gadget mobile. It's a very ingenious transformation that I do not want to do on camera because I don't want to break it, but I mean, look at it. The whole thing just sort of collapses in on itself and extends upwards. It's just amazing. Honestly, this is, this is why I love this hobby. This is hunting for plastic talismans that reveal vague hidden away memories, kind of like a mix between pop culture, archeology span and, and therapy, plastic therapy. I swear, it's all still up there somewhere, mint in mind. You just need a, a physical key sometimes to unlock that memory. And then when you're done, you're left with a permanent physical anchor to those newly rediscovered memories. That brings us to the end of the Mint in Mind Top 10 Toys of 2023, a year of deep nostalgic cuts and modern robot design excellence, all at the same time, random and eclectic, exactly the way I like it. I'm looking forward to next year to do some more offline toy hunting, to visit more toy shows across Europe and to do more, uh, more road trips. And of course, those trips should lead to some more content for this channel. For now, I would like to say Happy New Year. May your 2024 be full of toy shows and plastic treasure and grill finds. But most of all, I wish you good health. Hug the ones you love, keep it mint in mind, and I'll see you next year. Like, share, and subscribe.